morning tip, Steph Curry with just a, you know, cash 32 foot jump last night. A little something something. How demoralizing is that, Byron? You know what? The, the man has missed, I don't know how many days, how many games. Five weeks. In the first game, he comes back, he goes for 28 points in 27 minutes. If, I'm, if, I, if I am the Pelicans, I'm going, damn. <laughs> what, what happened to getting your legs under you? What happened to right, feeling it out? Yeah, what, yeah. Happened to, what, what happened to the rust? Yeah, yeah, right. The rust being on you and all that stuff. I, I just love that Steve wanted to you know, have him come off the bench again to ease himself back in because of the timeout structure, right, with that, that you get some breaks early. And, and everyone was like, great, six man of the year. But great, she eased him back in by putting him in the game. And the first play he runs is for him to run around, catch that's it, and bam, that's a three-pointer. But yeah. for Steph Curry, that's easing him back in. That's Jeez. his most comfortable okay. shot. Welcome Damn. to the the jump. I am Rachel Nichols. We've got Amin El Hassan back at the desk. Three-time NBA champ, yeah. coach of the year, Byron Scott Yay. with us as well. Good crew. So look, I think it's important to say right off the top, the playoffs are not over for Toronto. I saw the jokes as soon as the Raptors lost that game last night. People were picking, you know, Cavs in one. <laughs> and we got all the same old Raptors takes too, which is true. And that Toronto snarfed a game it should have won. And a game one mm. at home mm. at that. Although there's an argument to be made that at least they found a creative new wow. way to do it. I mean, it's not every team wow. that can miss its last 12 shots of regulation. That takes dedication it takes and consistency. Steals. But look, the Raptors still have the deeper, more balanced team. They still have plenty of ways to win this series. And if it does get to a game seven, that game will still be on their court. So there's all of that. But man, this was a bad loss. I mean, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. You know how we all said that after a grueling seven game series against the Pacers, the Cavs would be flat and tired to open this next series? Guess what? They were. The Raptors went up double digits early, still led by as many as 13 in the third quarter. And LeBron in particular looked wiped. Remember when he said after game seven, he was too burnt to even think about the Raptors? Well, last night it was entirely possible he was still too burnt to play against the Raptors. Yeah, he had a triple-double, but it was deceptive. He was 12 of 30 overall, 1 of 8 from 3, and he got worse, not better, as the game wore on. Just 3 of 15 in the fourth quarter and overtime. Of course, it's LeBron, so those three makes were very timely, mm -hmm. particularly this turnaround fadeaway with 30 left. That tied the game, and yet, here is Toronto with a chance to pull back ahead. Fred Blanvie's three. Oh, wait, no. How about the tip-in from DeRozan? No, woman, how about CJ Miles? No? <laughs> well, how about Jonas Valanciunas? Seriously? You have got to be kidding me. Valanciunas falls to the floor there like he's been shot, and frankly, that did not seem like an overreaction at that point. It looked like he was LeBron shot. tried the regulation game winner. Again, he was tired, so accordingly, the shot fell just a few inches short. But at that point, didn't really uh, matter. <laughs> you could feel the wave of resignation cascading through the Air Canada Center. And by the time the Cavaliers won an OT, yes, thanks to yet another Toronto miss just before the buzzer, the look on Kyle Lowry's face said it all. The Raptors will now spend the next two days thinking about all those missed bunnies. They will think about their 14 turnovers and that while Indiana managed to make the players around LeBron nearly invisible, Toronto somehow unleashed them. I mean, J.R. Smith had 20. Oh, mm. and the Raptors will also think about this, that at the very end of the night, LeBron sat up on the podium in their press room, in their arena, and said, quote, it was probably, you know, one of my worst games of the season. The man might be off social media right now, but he sure still knows how to troll. That was basically him telling the Raptors, yeah, I mean, you know, I could barely lift my arms tonight, but somehow I did still manage to squeeze the very life out of your hearts as they were still beating. <laughs> it's interesting now. It, it, we'll see how Toronto responds because, again, the Raptors still a very, very good team. Are they good enough to overcome this very bad game? Well, we'll see. So, Byron, what was the bigger headline for you? The Raptors collapsed or those gritty calves came back? The Raptors collapsed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the fact that they have them down in double digits, you know, in, in that third quarter, going into the fourth quarter, they still had a comfortable lead. And, and I thought, just watching this game, that you can just look at them bringing the ball up, looking at the clock like, please run out. Please mm. run out. You know, they wasn't playing to win the game. They were playing not to lose. And when you play like that against a LeBron James type team with that man on the floor, it, it spells disaster. And that's what ended up happening for Toronto. They got to keep playing aggressive basketball. You know, when they have an opportunity to push the ball, they got to push it. 
Uh, and when they have an opportunity to attack, they got to attack. I, I, I thought all those things went away for them. And all of a sudden, they were waiting for the clock to run down. They got to five, six, seven. Now they're trying to, you know, make a play. That's not how you play against this team. You got to get them moving from side to side and also just stay aggressive. I thought the Cleveland curse mm -hmm. of losing to them in so many playoff rounds started to get in their heads a little bit, and it, and it caught up to them. Now, hopefully we see a, se a different team in the second game because right now, if they lose game two, it's over. Yeah. Wow. Co Coach is right. You got to make them defend. You yeah. Gotta make them, we, and we know they're not good at that. <laughs> you got to make them move around and have to switch and have to communicate and all the things that they're not used to doing because they didn't do it all year long. But I'm telling you, uh, uh, Jonas Valanciunas, Channeling his inner Charles Smith. <laughs> that hurt my feelings, right? And I'm like, just gather and dunk Dunkin', the damn thing. Thank you, 7 2. Like, you, know, you know who does a great job of this, by the way? Rudy Gobert does a great job of this. Yes. When, yes. when he gathers, he, he'll pivot and then go up strong and finish it with two hands. And the fact that he did this on multiple possessions, oh, it yeah. just hurt my heart. Look at this right here. This is, we're talking about 14 year old of me right now. So like, just dunk it. Two, what are you doing? Three. What are you oh, doing? Man. Oh, my God. Oh, man. That's what I felt like watching Jonas Valanciunas last night. And I don't want to put it all on him because, like Coach said, they had the lead and they stopped playing. But you can't play scared, and that, to me, is mm. playing scared. Okay, I'm going to give yeah. a little credit to the Cavaliers here, saying this was not just all Toronto messing up. That the Cavaliers, look, Tristan did defend him. Right in that sequence we just saw, and you mentioned the rotating, which is completely fair. The right. Cavs' defense has been not good this season, but at the end, they actually did rotate correctly I on defense. Look at that. that was a that's wide open shot. No, 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 that's know, a wide open shot. Here's what I was going to say: they got the ball out of Demar's hands twice. Right. In the key, in the last few minutes, there were two different times that they actually played the correct. De I was shocked. I actually. I had to rewind it back on my DVR for a minute. I was like, wait, did they actually just do what they were supposed to do to limit the shot from the sharpshooter on the other team? Yeah. They did it. Now, that leads to an open shot for someone else, but that's all about, as you know, structuring it so the guy who shouldn't take the shot takes the shot, and then he missed the shot. But I'm, I'm, I, I give you credit for that. I, I agree with you on that point. But they still didn't make them work yeah. on the defensive end. It wasn't like two, three passes, no, and twice get the rotation, yeah. look to drive, now kick it out where you get open shot. It was bounce, 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 bounce. I'm going to try to beat you. Right. All right, help comes a little bit. No, no, yeah. that's not, that, you can't play that way against Cleveland. You got to get them moving side to side, put them in the pick and rolls, look to attack, roll, somebody replace. Now they got to make decisions, which they're not good on the defensive end of doing. Yes. Then you get wide and open shots. And they did that earlier in the, the first game. three quarters. On and over, going the first back three door, quarters. Dunk, all those plays, that's what we're talking about. That's the level of stress you need to put yes. on their defense. The, the part where my best player goes and they help and stop him, that's the easy part. We got to reverse and throw it back and mm -hmm. then someone, and someone's guarding some guy in the corner. He's not in the corner anymore because he got, that's what we're talking about offensively and they didn't do that down the stretch. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting because look, the rest of the Cavs stepped up last night. Yes, they did. That stuff that you guys yes, are talking about. Tristan Thompson, Jeff Green, Kyle Korver combining for 49 points. J.R. Smith, as we noted earlier, had 20. That is the highest total for anyone not lame LeBron on that team through their Jeez, eight playoff time. games so far. Jeez. Um, can LeBron rely on the support to continue, you guys think? Uh, I'm going to say no. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's nice when it happens, mm -hmm. but to assume it's going to happen every single time, it's kind of like my kid. Tell my kid, clean the room. And every once in a while, the room actually gets clean. And you're like, great <laughs> job. But to expect that tomorrow is going to be clean without me saying something about it? No, nah, I, 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 you're LeBron. You're gearing yourself up to have another superhuman game. But I do want to say one thing. Tristan Thompson. Mm -hmm. This yes. is what I was talking yes. about in the Indiana series. Yes. When you talk about why wasn't he playing earlier, that's a mystery yes. that I'd love to get answered. Why didn't he play earlier in that series? Because I feel like when you talk about a guy uh, who's a skilled guy who's got to come in and say, well, maybe he doesn't have it, maybe he can't get in the flow of the game. Tristan Thompson, it's not that. He's an energy guy. Right. He's a blue-collar guy. And every time he goes out there, he changes the complexion of the game with athleticism and hustle and all that. The idea that he didn't play early in the Indiana series was something that really made me scratch my head. I'm glad the last couple of games he's got that opportunity. Well, Teron Lue just spoke at practice. He said he is keeping love at the five to start. Mm -hmm. He likes the spacing, even though, of course, Kevin has had a rough playoff so that far. Bummed. Kyle Korver, though, has definitely been a factor for them, especially these last three games they've played. Well, again, another guy that you just can't leave. Mm. You can't leave. I mean, he is one of the best shooters ever. I've ever seen. Ever. I mean, catch and shoot, you know, there's not a whole lot of guys better. And if you can name them, you're going to be on one hand. Yep. <laughs>
than Kyle Carver. So he, he knows exactly who he is. He knows what to do out there. He's going to create that type of spacing. And I agree with me. As far as LeBron banking on these guys playing like that again, the only guy I think that can play like that on a consistent level is Tristan Thompson. Because Thompson. he doesn't need the ball. Yep. He'll get you double-digit rebounds if you're playing 25 to 30 minutes a game. He's going to get you double-digit points because he's going to get a couple of putbacks. Yep. He's going to get to the free throw line. Get some lobs. Yeah, he's going to get some lobs. Yep. But the other guys... I. I, four for four from Jeff Green. I, I would say, on that one? I, you know, you said no. I, I would say, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> he can, LeBron cannot expect those guys to play like that. For the rest, if they do, we, you might as well put them in the, the NBA Finals. Well, I mean, look, and also with the love, Tristan, all of you know, all the lineup moving around. Kevin likes playing at the four better, mm -hmm. and he was getting abused by Valanciunas during that game last oh. night. So they got to figure that out too if they're going to keep love at the five. That didn't last we'll, either. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> all right, so so. Drake had a thing last night. Oh, yep. A heated exchange with Kendrick. Not, not Man, Kendrick not Lamar. Smile right Kendrick Perkins. <laughs> it started just before halftime, continued as the Cavs were walking out the court after the game. <laughs> Our friend Bruce Arthur from the Toronto Star also reported, even after that, Drake went into the back hallway, started yelling through the curtain, leading to the Cleveland yeah. locker room, restrained by his own security, quote, go get your boy. I'm here in real life before he was then hustled away. <laughs> I'm here in real life. I can't, I don't even like know what, the court was not real life. Now it's real life in the, the Twitter. He's, 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 he's Twitter. Twitter and now he's, I'm here in yeah. real life. So Perk speaking after the game, he's like, What's he going to do? <laughs> this is amazing. Um, what do y'all think of that? <laughs> I wish Steven Jackson was here today. Um, yeah, man. That's probably not a smart move by Drake. Like, definitely not in the arena. Now, once you exit the arena, then you can, then you have the six to call on, right? <laughs> these are all my You could say these are my streets. Right. But when you're in the arena and there are enough people to make sure that no one's going to get jumped. Right. Ah, oh, man, I, I, that's not a fair fight right there. <laughs> now, that's a 100-pound difference, but I, I think that when Drake went back there to start yelling and say, this is, re I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here, this yeah. is real life, he had some backup, you know, somewhere around that he probably well, called during that game or after that game. According to Bruce, this, his own security was, was kind of working against him, trying to be yeah. like, we should go. Well, they know that's not a good look. <laughs> we yeah. should go. But, I mean, but, you know, hey, <laughs> Shout out to Future the Prince, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, it, it's all funny like, games. This is, we this remember is, all know, of Drake's moments. Drake has had moments yeah. with guys, and he tries to, I don't want to say interfere in the games, but remember, he tries to get guys when they're like, yeah, you when, know, yeah, throwing when the ball in, when they're trying to get down and stuff. Heckling is cool, but you can't lose your mind and forget where you are. By the way, shout out to Kendrick Perkins with one of the all-time greatest NBA quotes in NBA history. He said, I'm supersized ninja. And he didn't say ninja. <laughs> supersized. There you go. Um, he did, by the way, if you want to know how all this started, <laughs> he and Serge Ibaka, I'm just going to keep going because this is a family show. Oh, um, he and Serge Ibaka, who of course were teammates in Oklahoma City, Kendrick was trash talking Ibaka saying this game is over at halftime, mm -hmm. and which again, Cavs were not up. Yeah, they were Whatever. down double digits. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, they were like, they That's how you do it, by the way, Terry Rozier. Yeah. You do it then. You talk trash then. You don't wait until after the game. And, say, and Drake got involved over. in the Ibaka Perkins friendly trash talk, and then it's not so friendly. Mm. Coming up, these guys will react to the public comments exchanged by Charles Barkley oh. and Draymond Green last night. The NBA is amazing. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. Here's oh, yeah, our history play. So. This date, 1994. That's not Vince Carter, then. 1994. Yeah. Five Unless it's Charles. Right? Can't even move and still block Sonic, I'm seriously, I'm oh, in love with him. I remember this. I remember this. Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Oh! oh. oh. See, Sean Kidd didn't think he was going to do it. Over the Raid Man. He didn't think he was going to do it. Yeah, the Raid Man said, let me just run down the court. Yeah, he didn't have to go about it. Let me run down the court. He didn't think he was actually going to do it. That was the thing. Mm. I like all the skinny Sean Kemp video we show, too. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. That's when we Oh, remember it. when. Ah. Real smooth.